This is Sexy Funny Raw, the podcast with me, adult film star and comedian Sylvia Sage, here to discuss what you've only dared to ask Google. Undress, unzip, and unwind. The party starts now. <laughs> it's my favorite opening. Like I, I've, It's my own opening. I recorded it. I hear it every time on the show. I love it. I think it's great. I did a great job. Thanks. Yeah, you did. (sighs) Welcome back. (laughs) Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Sexy, Funny, Raw. And for the second time in a row, uh, this will not tell you that I pre-tape my shows whatsoever, but my father is here as a guest co-host. Welcome, my dad, Mike. (laughs) And my guest host for today, Dr. Lovejoy giving us uh, all the sexy phone calls you can handle for 15 plus years. Also hosting your own radio show on XM Radio, which I've been on several times. I love you to death. You're one of my favorite people in the world. We spend so much of our time together. We didn't used to spend so much of our time together and we like set it to up to where we're like, we have no excuses. Like we're going to pick yes. a day on the calendar and then we make that day happen because we just love each other's company so much. So thank you for being oh, back on the show. So nice. And you are my favorite, yeah. uh, guest on my show whenever yeah. someone when someone can't come in you're my first call but you know that yeah you guys do call me a lot, a lot. but yeah, you do yeah. call. i don't get out there as much as i, I want to imagine how many times you'd been on though by now no. if you i know a lot, like you'd practically just be my co-host i know <laughs> yeah. honestly though yeah. because yeah, yeah you guys have a lot of open yeah. slots yes okay. oh like yours <laughs> oh uh, hey everything's hey. got a price yeah. even <laughs> la parking meters which is uh the size of our next Guest for oh. the day, <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Lila Hart, comedian, good friend of mine. Thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, absolutely. And that is one of her claims to fame, is being as tall as a L.A. parking meter. Which is what? Four foot six. Four foot six, yeah. Four foot six. Yeah, and <laughs> actually, I've been on Lila's show as well. She hosts a show called Small Talk on Channel uh, 310. What is that What is that on, the Channel 310? Where can they watch it? And that's on YouTube. On YouTube, and we okay. we are on Spotify. Spotify. Okay, good. Yeah, we're all over now. All right. I love it. It was so much fun. She sets it up like a um, like a talk show, basically, and has other comedians come on. She has uh, musical guests come on. It's fun. I had so much fun. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. you were great. And all everybody you had on your show was fantastic. And I... I've even been there when your mom was there. Yeah. Like, it was so much fun. <laughs> I loved it. I love when we get to incorporate our, our families into everything you do. Your mom is, like, a huge fan of yours, by the way. Oh, she's the best. She comments on everything on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> you guys can find her at Esper Hart. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Does she have a social media following? She has a, she has a little bit of a following on Instagram. But okay. she, I love it. she responds back to every comment. Oh. And if she follows you, she'll comment on your stuff, too. She's very supportive. Oh, I love it. So sweet. I love it. And now, if you don't know, um, Lila does, um, I don't want to say suffer, that seems like an off word for me, but does have uh, spina bifida and, and and lives her life that way. And so we have aptly um, named our show due to that, that good things come in small packages. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I, the one day I wear heels, by the way. Right. The one, I'm 5'2", and I'm usually, you know, she's right. always in heels. I know. And the one day I'm always flat. So hi, this yes. is a minute you know we're, we're snack size yes. fun size yeah <laughs> and you do actually you have your degree in broadcasting right yes I went to Washington State yeah. University uh, in Pullman Washington I have a degree in broadcast productions and minor in political science so. and then got into comedy and you've been doing comedy for how many years now I uh, in February it'll be four years wow so. I and love it I met Sylvia like at Right around when I started comedy. Yeah, I feel not like, yeah. too long after. So yeah, it's crazy. we've done a bunch of shows together over the years. And then I was just saying before um, we got into things that Lila and I were booked on like this hilarious show. I don't even know. It was an amazing weekend. First off, I don't even know how they found the two of us to put us together the way that they did. Like, mm-hmm. I think originally I was booked with Ron Jeremy on that, mm-hmm. and then somehow he backed out. Thank God, because Ew. I cannot stand <laughs> yeah, Ron like, Jeremy. Ugh. He is an awful human being. But then they put Lila on the on the um, lineup, and I was like, oh, my God. 
this is going to be great. So what it was is we got booked to do a show in Nashville, two show, four shows. We had two we, two shows each night. So two four shows, each shows night. in total. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Friday and Saturday night. And Lila was my feature act. And then I would headline. And because I'm Sylvia Sage, they asked me to strip for two songs. Yeah, because we were at a strip club. We were, we're performing at a, at a strip club. Yeah. So we literally have to stop the stripping to do stand-up comedy, which they have told no one is happening. So all of a sudden, Lila gets thrown up on stage and has to, like, wrangle a crowd into listening to comedy. And it was not... It was such a nightmare because they didn't. They had never done comedy in this club before. Yeah. This was new to everyone. They didn't have a stage set up properly. They didn't have their microphone system working properly. At one point, Lila didn't even have a microphone. She's just screaming at the audience. I was it screaming was, my material. Yeah. It was insane. But we got through all four shows. No one will ever hire me to strip again, and I'm totally okay with that. It was. I think you did a great job. Oh, Lord, no, it you don't. Good. No one thought that. <laughs> like, literally, they were just so happy to see my... My songs in like even the like the lady who was like the head of the stripper she was like trying to tell me how to do things you were giving oh. me tips of how to do things oh it my was, god <laughs> it was rough it was a rough were yo. people tipping but it was you? so much fun like you know did, what did they i think that you were gonna be funny and then all of a sudden you're gonna did we give you did thing? get like, tips i will say that out of i am so grateful for that experience yeah. performing stand-up comedy at a strip club yeah in Thus far in my career has was one of the moments that really like taught me like wow I can do this if you can do stand up comedy in a strip club you <laughs> yeah. can do stand up comedy anywhere I mean <laughs> yeah. like because you have to imagine this one of the nights we didn't get up till one thirty in the morning yes. after and I'm following a naked woman getting yeah. off stage they're yeah. handing me a microphone they're like hey do the stand up and I go up there and people are just looking at you like why does this girl still have her clothes on <laughs> right. you know yeah. what is she doing and so. I go into my material. I'm like, I'm going to do what I would normally do. And I talk about, you know, having spina bifida. And at one point, I'm like, praise God, hallelujah. And the crowd is with me, praising the Lord that, yes. you know. So no, it was, no, it was actually like a beautiful like, moment because I'm like, you know, in the joke, I'm praising God that, um, that I'm grateful that I'm able to walk. And so when I do that, the crowd goes crazy and they throw money on the stage. Oh, my God. So gosh. they actually threw the money on the stage and they're with me for the jokes. And I was just like, wow, yeah. I'm literally talking about spina bifida and disability at a strip club right now <laughs> and the crowd the is going with it you know yeah, so like yeah. it was just as a disabled woman like it was yeah. a really like profound moment for me I'm like wow like I feel sexy I'm at a strip club I'm yeah. talking about disability and the crowd is laughing and loving it like damn I can do comedy anywhere you yeah. know so and plus I got to be with Sylvia and it was just we such, a, such fun a fun time. weekend it was so much fun we vibed together really yeah. great you know and then she performed and then <laughs> I'd follow her to the next stage where she's stripping and I'm like on the sideline cheering her on yeah. you know <laughs> so I mean we were definitely like a little team there so yeah. it was fun that is the yeah. That, that this is a routine in itself. Yeah. <laughs> are you yeah. kidding me? And when you stripped, you, are you getting butt naked? Did I? I think did I did. Yeah. yeah. So I think I it did. It was a yeah. butt naked but situation. Yeah. yeah. And then you're getting dressed and getting back up and being funny. No, I would do comedy first. Uh, okay. So we I would do comedy first, and then I would go into a different stage and then go strip. Dance. And then did you come back and do another comedy? Another show a few hours later. A few hours later. But the crazy thing is it's like it is so so hard to do comedy and it like it would be much easier to strip than to do yeah. the stand up because it's like yeah. it's not comedy is not made they for don't the want you to be com they don't want you to be doing comedy there but actually people were when we actually got them going and, we, and things mm -hmm. were going good, people were listening. They were intent. They were laughing. Like, they were good with it once it was going. And I think we kind of figured out the second night, okay, this is what we're going to do. Since yeah. they're not promoting it, I would go around to each of the tables, <sighs> make friends with people, and be like, hey, in a few hours, we're going to do yeah. comedy. So not only were we doing stand-up, we're being our own PR people. Right. Like, hey, telling people, like, you know, laugh because we're going to be doing this. So I'm, I'm yeah. trying to, like, get people to like us. Yeah. <laughs> this is so cool. fun. Yeah. I and think it sounds great. On Saturday, like, the day of... Uh, uh, the second show, we went out during the day and we went out in Nashville to all the bars on the oh bar street gosh. and handed out flyers we to our out show. We handed flyers to tell people like, to come watch us yeah. do stand-up. Yeah, yeah we went everywhere. Club, they must have thought you were like a 
this wasn't serious. They right? thought we like were crazy. A, yeah. Or we tr- just like a blooper thing. Like we tried to go do comedy at a real comedy club while we were there. That didn't work out for us, but we tried. Uh, it was Lila's idea and I thought it was a great idea, but we got there a little too late and the headliner was already on, but it worked out because the headliner was this huge New York comedian that ended up coming and meeting us later on in the yeah, night. Yeah, it, it was Andrew. Andrew Schultz. Yeah, he ca- so then he came with his crew to the strip club on the last night to like hang out with us. He missed our show, but oh, yeah. it was like, so cool. It was a cool situation, you know? Like, we met up with other comedians, yeah. and then they came and yeah, supported support us. Yeah, they supported us. Yeah. Did you strip? Did they see you strip? No, they done? weren't there for that. Thank okay. God. Thank God no one was there to see that atrocity <laughs> happen. It was, I have, first off, I have no rhythm. That's the that's the problem, is I don't feel a beat. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, white girl moves all day. Like, so I don't, like, roll into music. I'm just real awkward, and, like, I feel like I almost fell over a few times. Stripper and, heels? Like, the full, the... I had on regular heels. Okay. I can't do platforms. Right. I would have really died. The pleasers? I can't. Okay. No, we're not. What I was couldn't. your song? I can't even tell you, you right now. I can't. I'd have to really think about it. You were wearing it. feathers. You I had, had feathers. I had a whole had, like, like, a little thing. Whip. Yeah, I can't remember oh, now. Oh, really? Yeah, I did. I was trying to like uh, well, do you other wanna things. Have, you want to have different layers to get to rid of, of take right, off, you right. know? Because you don't want to just get naked. You yeah, have two you more wanna, songs, you know? Yeah. So you want to kind of... You got to do two songs. That's a lot. It sounds like eight minutes. Long, it sounds like the longest eight minutes. Because the longest eight minutes Did you get great life. tips, though? I don't even remember. She got tips. It was good. Yeah, it was such it was a, flowing. It was a nightmare. No, we're moving it on great. from it because it was really a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lila, were you like, were you like the class clown? Like, how did you get into comedy? You know, I, I've always just been, I've always been very like talkative, and I would talk to people like strangers at the airport or just be in line and talking to people. So. Growing up, especially when I was in college, I got a lot of like, oh, are you like some sort of comedian? I didn't think like, oh, I'm going to go out and do stand up. You know, I got my degree in broadcast production because originally I wanted to be a news anchor because behind a news desk like this, you right. have no idea right. that I am four foot six. Right. You know, if you met me right now, you would not know that. So I was in my mind, I was like, okay. I'm going to be a news anchor. No one's going to know that I'm four <laughs> six. And because I wasn't really ready to start, you know, openly talking about yeah. having a disability, having spina bifida. Like I never would talk about that. I was just small, you know, and uh, I got into comedy. It just it naturally kind of happened. I had an epiphany one day. I realized that no one was going to hire me as the four foot six love interest on a soap opera. But if <laughs> I became a comedian, you know, they'd write in parts for me. Yeah. So comedy is yeah. where it's at I love that <laughs> I love that what were you doing before comedy then so before comedy um I did work in digital advertisement you know I yeah. did uh stuff for YouTube and Facebook so I did a lot of social media stuff and then you know random gigs you know in LA just trying to make a living I mean I, I've done all sorts of things yeah here in LA I've sold knives door to door girl me too Cutco I work for Cutco too serious? I totally did in Kansas yeah. City though my dad had to buy a set of knives for me which is just yeah. like insane you know like I'm literally walking and giving you the tools to kidnap kill me, you you know so I'm like you. what am I doing um yeah. but I do believe like all these different jobs I had like door-to-door sales yeah. or just I remember one time I worked for this uh, blowout this uh it was called blow bunny it was like a blowout bar and i had to wear bunny ears in the parking oh, lot God. walk around and ask people if they wanted to get oh, no. a blowout you know or like buy a package <laughs> deal wait and because you're a midget i would um oh, not a midget i didn't you're not a midget but a small person it's okay we'll talk because, about that too <laughs> yeah i don't want to say that because you're a smaller person i hear get a blowout and you're oh please that's the first the dick first blowing thing size i w- just imagine men are just thinking you're offering blowjobs all day in a bunny suit right yeah i mean it was a <laughs> uh, it was a very a interesting <laughs> situation, but you know, looking back on that, I'm like, man, like it takes a lot of bravery to just go out there and talk to people. Yeah. So it's nice now to be able to use all these experiences and be yeah. on stage and kind of talk about that. Yeah, you know, all the shit jobs we've done, so many shit jobs. But yeah. you know, comedy. It, the reason I love comedy so much is it's been really such a healing process because you know I can talk about disability, I can talk about 
you know, saying the word midget. I can yeah. talk about all of these things that used to really make me feel so uncomfortable. And it's almost like going on stage and owning you, it. You own it and you take the power back, right? Yeah. Like, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about mm -hmm. the midget thing. Like, so, if someone, how do you? So, because I have questions. Yeah. So this questions. is what's when I was in college. I have like a, a particular memory being with my group of girlfriends, walking down the street, going to a party, and this guy yells across the way. He's like, oh my gosh, there's a midget over there. And mm. my friend Barona, she is this tall, beautiful brunette, gets so angry, and she's like yelling at this guy, right? And so it's crazy to think that fast forward to like eight years later, I'm on stage calling myself the baddest midget bitch, you know? <laughs> so it's just, it's kind of like taking this toll where it's like that word would make me feel like so ashamed and make mm -hmm. me feel so uncomfortable. And it wasn't until I got to Los Angeles and I met other women with spina bifida. I went to my first Little People of America conference, mm -hmm. you know? So I met so many other people who have struggled with disabilities who are also small. And in fact, like I have friends who are even smaller than me. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's crazy to think that when I was in university, I was the only little person on campus. Wow. Really? You know? Yeah. Oh, so surprised. it's. Surprised. Yeah. And then I move out to LA and like LA just attracts so many, yeah. so much diversity out here. And I feel like to come out here and to pursue your dreams, you're going to, you know, attract really like other really confident, strong women. Yes. And I've really kind of built a tribe of so many different strong women, but also disabled women who are out here doing their thing. So, you know, in the little people community, um, the, the M word, midget, some people like to use it, some people are offended by it, but for me, I've just, with the journey that I've gone through with this process of going through hating that word, don't say that word to like, fuck it, I'm the baddest midget bitch, you yeah. know, it's like, it's been a process, so for me, I'm not offended by the word, but I could still understand why some people in their journey have not gotten there yet, you know, yeah. so it's just, it's a process, but yeah. that's what I love about stand-up, you know, like, I can confidently say at 28, I can talk about anything on stage. Yeah. Absolutely anything, you know? So disability and my sex life, whatever I want to say. And it's so absolutely freeing. Yeah. No, I agree with that 100%. And that's kind of how I feel about like the word slut or whore or anything like it's that. It's like, a word. It used to really bother me, especially in school, like being younger. Like I was slutty, but I didn't. I didn't want anybody to say that. You know, I didn't want to be like the slutty girl, you know? Like, It'd be better if they were like, she's promiscuous. No. It's okay. It's like, it just been like, well, you know what? It's not the word. It's the intent behind the word, right? right. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying to you, like, oh, you're a midget. Yeah. I'm going to get with that sexy yeah. midget. You know, it's like, oh, my God, a midget. You know what I mean? Or yes. like, it's not saying, like, oh, damn, she is a slutty girl. I'm yeah. into that. It's like, yeah. oh, she's a slut. You know? Yes. So it's, yeah. totally that's delivery. what it is. And yeah. I think we get so hung up on words, right? And it's like, it's not really the word. It's the intent behind the word. It's what I'm trying to use the word. And sometimes people Hell. are using these words to hurt you. Exactly. Yeah. And so when you're on stage and you're taking your power back by talking about your sexuality mm -hmm. and talking about, you know, owning it and being the badass that you are, it's like that word can't hurt me anymore. You yeah. know, it used to. I'm not going to say that it didn't, but I'm so past and so far beyond that. Yeah. No, I love it. Yeah. Okay. Move. I Wait, can, can I have a quick question yes, on the midget yeah, thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm so good I'm, at I'm so along. curious if, uh, how many men come to you just as a fetish, mm -hmm. and do you have to see through that? Because... Well, um, definitely when I was younger, for mm -hmm. sure, like in, in college, you know, it'd be a lot of like, oh my God, my friend's afraid of a little person. And it's like any guy that says is they're afraid of a little person definitely wants to mm -hmm. fuck a little person. Yeah. So yeah. that's what it is. Um, and of course there is going to be like fetishes like that too, but the real switch for me, like as far as being confident about it, you know, I realize that I am little, so people are going to look because I am mm -hmm. so much smaller. But I'm also a really beautiful woman, yes, so they're going to continue to stare, yes, you know? You so just own that part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're, I you're, love you're, that. You are gorgeous. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, no, she was stunning. <laughs> and you have great hair. Thank yeah. you. You're just okay. complete. Okay, we're moving on. Yes. I get sidetracked, and we have to move on to our word of the day. <clears throat> our word of the day for today, fletching. Can anyone guess, or does anyone know what fletching means? Go ahead, don't look at my. Is screen. it a wet fart? No. <laughs> Is it like to to get something, like to fetch almost? <laughs> Am I close? <laughs> no, Dad. Any guesses? No guess. You have no guess. No. Okay. To fletch is to suck up semen out uh. of an orifice. Using a straw uh. is optional. For instance, someone may ejaculate into their partner's anus and then suck out their own semen out of the anus uh. with their mouth. They may then 
swallow or not to swallow. Keep in mind that the exchange of fluids in this way is associated with the risk <clears throat> of STDs. Fletching, ladies and gentlemen. Fletching. Who wants to fletch tonight? Anybody fletching? Never done. They ban straws Never fletch? anyway. Do not end I don't. I know you. <clears throat> oh my God! I can't speak. I'm sorry. I keep eating these frogs in my throat. You have a, an amazing boyfriend who's a comic as well. You don't. You don't get freaky. No fletching. No fletching. No. Okay. <laughs> Eric's a good boy. Good you job. Don't fletch. You don't fletch. You don't fletch. Do I you mean, fletch? Well, uh, sometimes I take my um, metal uh, uh, straw out and sometimes get you kinky. <laughs> fletch yeah, it. Just like, mm. Have you I fletched, like, Dad? No. Never fletched. I've never fletched. But you know, it's a thing, and I just like to. <sighs> I like people to learn, you know, and and no shame in your game if that's your thing, you know. So no, there's some shame. Fletch in it, it sometimes. up. <laughs> Uh, I'm, here to I'm here to shame you. Let him fletch. Oh, she does yeah, like to I shame. Did all She's shame our her. resident shamer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This you is where we need shame. the shame button to come on yeah. in. This is where we need shame, shame, shame. <laughs> right? Would you ever date a client? Not one of your, your clients. Um, No. I'm not turned on by submissive men. You're not, yeah. No. I'm not I, super turned on by I, that You either. know, it's cool. Like, I don't want really a man who wears panties. I you want don't. a man who wears the pants. Yeah, but you know, it's, oh, dad, dad, uh, dad. I got uh, some, I got, we can go to Victoria's Secret after. Uh, <laughs> you and me get matching sets. So um, no, you're not going to date a fan. No, I'm not. You know, I, I take that back. It depends on who the person is. Because not, okay. not every fetish is freaky. Sometimes it's just uh, wanting to talk to a, a woman who's yeah. just... Uh, a little more on the domineering side. You know, it's funny to me because I hear a lot of times, like, because we have um, obviously paid messaging sites and stuff like that. Like, I have OnlyFans and in my premium Snapchat where you can message me, but it's all paid. Same with, you know, Sexed Panther and stuff like that. Um, and, and people are like, oh, I would never pay to talk to somebody. I'm like, <sighs> well, why? Because I'm not going to spend my time talking to you for free. So if you want to talk to me, they you all can say that, pay for it. They pay for it, you know? Yeah. Time is it's money. So, mm -hmm. Same. Yeah, 100%. Like, I'm not going to just... You're not here for fun. Right. I love when people yeah. are like, I, can I... I had this yesterday, actually. He's like, can I Skype with you? I'm like, yeah. And I sent him my rates for Skyping. Uh -huh. And then he goes, oh, well, that's a little bit out of my price range, but I'd like to keep in touch. I'm like, well, what do you mean? We're not keeping in touch. Let me know when no. you've saved up the money. <laughs> like, well, I don't know why you think we're going to be free pin pals. Like, this is not... I could be free pin pals with the m million of people, you know? Like, I would mm -hmm. never do anything cool. with my time. They're so sweet. I would really love them if I got to know them. Yeah, uh, that's how it is. We'd be, we'd be really tight. If I really just gave them a chance, we would fall in love. Have you ever declined a client response of something they wanted? Oh, well, all the time. Yeah. yeah, because sometimes I get they, they start normal, and then they try to segue it into mm. uh, incest or underage. Uh, the incest I don't care about, mommy, dom, whatever. Yeah. But I will not underage do, shit. I don't Can't want, do it. They'll do this. They'll be like, God, I, I love young girls, and be like, oh, oh, something, and then they'll say thirteen. I'm like, well, here's what I think you need. You actually need psychiatric help, and click. Yeah, because I'm like, fuck good this for you. Shit. I don't need your fucking money. Good for you. you sick fuck. Do you ever get weird shit in your DMs? Um, you know what? I like now that I have a boyfriend, you yeah, know, it's not kind of much. like it's dwindled down, mm -hmm. you know, because you um, post a lot with him. So, yeah, yeah. so the do. fantasy is taken away. Yeah, that's yeah. what happens. The, the yeah. Fan. You can't post anything. If I even post a picture with a guy friend, like it mm -hmm. could be Stoner Rob, for Christ's sakes. And I'm like, we're comedians. We do a billion shows together. You know, a like a man it'll, it'll, will probably even cause like he's good. Oh, even when I post pictures of me with Wesley, like people are like, oh, you guys are dating. And I'm like, I, you couldn't be further from the truth. Like. Like we might have slept with some of the same people, but <laughs> we are not dating. Like it's it, any picture you take with a man, it just like instantly kills a lot of your DMs. So did that, that hurt makes... your fan base? Did it? Did fan base go down with the boyfriend? No. Um. Out? You know what? I I because like you know we're we're in comedy and it's yeah. like uh not the same field. Mm -hmm. But yeah. but at the same time, it's like you know when you have a boyfriend, it's like if you like you said it, it ruins that like illusion of yeah. like oh I could yeah. date this the person. Chance. But at the same time, I'm like I'm very happy in my relationship, and I want to showcase that side yeah. of it too. Mm -hmm. So I show a lot of that, and I think in a way, it's kind of built my relationship with my fans to be stronger because they're they're like rooting for the relationship, yeah. you know. And I'm posting a lot of um, and you guys work together. We do a lot of things together. We yeah. do channel. Th 310 together. He's an incredible comedian. Yeah. You know, we um we're writing a cartoon together about oh, our cat great. cupcake. So oh, cute. there's uh, a lot of fun stuff going on and I actively engage with a lot of my fans, yeah. you know. I mean I thank everybody and so even when I did get the boyfriend, it was like because I was still engaging with them, I don't think I lost anybody. Yeah, that's good. And then I think I've I've gained new fans because, because of, of that. that. Probably yeah. women too. Yeah. You what know, that 
What do you like best about hosting your own show? Um, you know, I love it being in charge of like booking amazing talent and then I get to put together this awesome show which show gives people the opportunity to showcase what they do and yeah. um, the end product make me, makes me so happy when we put the whole video up and then yeah. you know the other comedians are able to use it as their tape and you, it's just really nice. It's crazy to me that you say booking is your favorite part because that's my least favorite part of hosting <laughs> a show like well because I feel like everyone always is asking to be on your show you know but and I don't I mean this in the best way possible like I only do two shows a month so I'm going for the best of the best you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying yes. like and I don't want to offend people but like I only want to have the strongest people I want to have the people who I know who are you know talented and 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 are going places and and verbally can handle themselves as I like, and 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 and, and. <laughs> <laughs> I want all the people to be really good at what they do but not me <laughs> um so yeah <laughs> no I do and I and it's hard for me because I feel like I'm like oh well maybe in February or maybe in June because I only have so many people I only book three people on a show you know so I mean and Another thing I like about it is it's like this time capsule too. You yeah. know, like I'm not oh, waiting. Yes. I'm not waiting for like a network to give me a, a TV show. I started yeah. Small Talk. We did it with Channel 310. So we great. found a theater that would let us host it there and we yeah. filmed it, you know, and we were able to film. Um, we filmed eight episodes last year. Yeah. So it's just now I'll have that forever and I can see where yeah. I was at that time period in my career, mm -hmm. you know, and um, on the on my high school 10 year anniversary 10 year reunion I wasn't at my 10 year reunion I was filming my birthday episode oh, on wow. my show and it was just like so powerful yeah. you know my professor in college told me I told him I was like I'm gonna move to LA I want to have my own talk show <laughs> and he was like okay you and everybody else like yeah. good luck and like you know basically kind of dissed me yeah. so it's crazy to think hey guess what I do have my own show it's on YouTube like I yeah. do it we do it with our channel 310 crew and it's like don't let don't let anyone ever tell you you can't do something because 100%. you just don't know how it's going to pan out and work out. You oh, know, hundred percent. I could not agree with you more. Like I think that all the time. I can't even. There's a country song that talks about like uh, moving out and uh, and being so broke, trying to make it as an artist, and then uh, she says, you know, like please, mom and dad, please send money. Yeah. You know, I can't, I'm so broke and blah blah blah. And I'm like, oh, that's me. I can't even listen to the song without choking up because then it g mentions like, and then I'm doing well and I'm staying at the Ritz and I'm sending money home to you. And I'm like, I did that. I'm doing it. I made it. I made it in Los Angeles. And it's like you, you know, you lot. have to like, yeah, and you have to reward yourself every once in a while and like, holy shit. I did it, you know? Like, every once in a while, I look around just even driving down the highway, and you see the Hollywood sign, the palm trees, and you're like, I've been here. I'm here for five years. I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. I get it. It's such a good feeling. It's, like, overwhelming. You yeah. lived out I've been, here for I've too, been here 26 years. You lived here for too long for it to be exciting oh, yeah. to you anymore. No, no, it's, I still do. Does it feel excited? Um, I think, like, wow, I can't believe I've made it. Like, because, uh, look, in 26 years, I've yeah. seen a lot of people come and go. Oh, 100%. And yeah. for the most part, everybody goes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm still standing. Yeah. And as uh, we've talked about how I started in a studio apartment. Mm -hmm. And her house. In my neighborhood. <sighs> just And just in it's 25 years house. has literally moved down up. It, it went from studio to one bedroom yeah. to two bedroom to townhouse to my own house. Yeah. And own gorgeous house. Thank by the way. you. It's my favorite house. And like. I can't believe that I'm still standing. Can I say uh, you like grow pot there and you have like the most beautiful I do garden? Grow, I do grow no, marijuana. That, that is it's very great. inspiring because yes. it's important to kind of like remember, you know, I've, I've lived in my car. I've lived in, I've had shitty roommates. I've had 17 different roommates oh in Holy the last shit. five years of living in this, chasing this California dream. I've moved away from California once. I've done like, this is my third time, oh my but God. I've been here on the 15th. It'll be four years. So it's my third time doing the LA thing. So what do you four think? Four years consecutively. What do you think is the biggest surprise then to you about moving here? Like what was the biggest like a surprise about LA that you've learned? Well, you know, when you first move out here, I feel like it's so easy to be so naive, you know, oh, like, yeah. so like, I remember going on, so I, I found every roommate that I've had on Craigslist <gasps> up until, so this, I live with my boyfriend and our roommate, Alan, now, and we live in a townhouse, so I love that you, like, named all the different yeah, places, yeah, like, yeah. oh my god, I'm in the townhouse yeah, now, that's right. <laughs> okay, that's, that's totally how it goes. it's happening, it's yeah. all happening, yeah. um, these are my, this is the first time I'm living with people that I chose to live with, mm. it's like the best place I've ever lived, this most comfortable I've been, I've never had this much stability in my life and I've only had this kind of stability for the last two months so it's insane yeah but um I, all everybody I found was on Craigslist my 
when I moved back here for the third time, I went on Craigslist to, you know, find a one bedroom to rent out. And um, this man was renting out rooms in his house in Burbank. I drove like the 19 hours to move out here, mm -hmm. knock on the door. And this man was like six foot ten and I'm four foot <laughs> six. So it was like really funny. You know what I mean? Like that. I didn't Were you mention. Scared? No, like he was this old older man, and I like didn't. And it, there was another woman that lived in the house, but it was just like, this is such a movie right now, you know? Yeah. Like he's literally a giant, and everything in this house is like, How did you know, your like parents way up feel about you doing that. So the third time I moved, actually, my parents were like, "Don't go!" Like you know, they didn't want me to go, and I was like, "No, I'm gonna do it." And it was the one. This was like the one time I was like, "Oh my god!" Like no one's like supporting this decision, but like I know that I'm supposed to be in LA. And a month later, I started comedy. Oh, you know, awesome. so it's just and and since starting comedy, it's like it's really been the glue that's kept me here because the community is so wonderful. Yeah. I found my passion. I didn't find it till I was 24, so it was like. It, once you figure out what it is that you're meant to do, everything else kind of opens up, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I think I spent the first few years out of college, like, who am I? What am I going to do? Am I just supposed to do a nine to five for the rest of my life? Like, what the hell? And it's like, you know, you go into this depression cycle and like, yeah. so. And it's hard to step into a world of being an artist because the money, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. it's hard to go like, okay, I'm going to give up having any stability and just fucking wing it like here we go you know it's tough it's a tough thing to do i love it okay Even in this town i know really because it's, oh, it's okay anyway moving on so this <laughs> is my favorite part of the show and this is a section of the last thing that you googled related to sex or sexuality I turn to you, Ms. Layla Hart. Okay, so this is so funny, but um, I feel like I'm always Googling this. Like, I'm always Googling, like, uh, am I pregnant? Is, yeah. why is my period late? Like, it's always something related to that. And then... Um, I keep extra <laughs> sticks in my under my sink, just in case. Period sticks? I, yeah, I get pregnancy? nervous all the time. Yeah, And it's so funny, because my boyfriend, like, he'll get so upset. He'll be like, oh my gosh, you do this every month. You're not <laughs> pregnant. You do this every month, you know? And then, of course... I'm not. Um, <laughs> Wait, do you want to be though? So is that? No, 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 no. I don't oh, want to okay. be it. Yeah, okay. you know, we're not. We're totally. We're still in the townhouse. We have okay. to get the house. Are you on the then, pill? No, I'm not on any. Oh, oh my oh, god, god, Lila. Girl, okay, so the on, reason us, like, oh. I have to tell you though, the reason that I'm not <laughs> is because so in 2017, three days after the New Year, I had like this incredible stomach pain. So I went to the ER and then four hours later I had emergency surgery and they took out my left ovary. Oh my God. So I only have one ovary, which is insane. But um, I have gotten to this point, like I got sober, so I stopped drinking mm -hmm. alcohol and started taking care of my body really well and like, you know, got to the point where I was like really regulating when my period would come. So um, I'm just, I feel super physically healthy. I don't want to get on the pill. So we kind of yeah. just like use this tracker where it was like, mm -hmm. you're ovulating <laughs> so you can have sex here, this and that. And then oh, wow. Eric just thinks that his pullout game is so strong. So <laughs> of every man know, thinks his pullout roulette. game is so strong. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'm not pregnant. So <laughs> I'm on my period. Everything is good. But I just think it's funny that I always do that. Hilarious. Okay. Know? Can I just quickly recommend, yeah. do, you, do you have an iPhone? Mm -hmm. The new health app, the period tracker, oh, really? is dead on. Hmm. It, it told me the day, and I'm not a regular person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it is wow. pretty unbelievable. So I highly so, okay, recommend. Okay, cool. That is good to know yeah. because Hilarious. I do love a good do you, tracker. Do you guys use them? I, I use this app? thing called Flow. I don't have Flow. a period. Oh, that's right. Oh, so yeah. you're like, I don't need it. Yeah. I don't need it. P tracker is the one I used to use. That's why I have pee sticks under my counter is because I my birth control stops my period, so I don't mm. get a period. So... I, I you just get the physical feelings though, and just no flow. Yeah, I get the cries, I get the cramping, even like oh, wow. yeah, so I you get, do get it. You just get. It I with do no get it with no blood, blood but which kind of scares me because I'm like, shouldn't I be losing? A I think there's amount? a name for that, by the way. I think it's like some kind of a menses ish. There, there is a name for having your period with you no flow. Google it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's you should <laughs> yeah. Google. That should be my <laughs> next thing. But so my last Google, because I always get so gross. Alexander hates it when I do this, but he's not here today. So fuck it. I get to talk about it because I like to be honest on my show. And I like to tell people that there are downfalls in life and that everything isn't always hunky dory. And I am the yeast infection queen and it happens and it happens to other people. It's not just me. Uh, but I do have a very sensitive vagina, which is why I don't know why I do porn, because I 
kid's sick all the time. I have a very sick vagina. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I do try to maintain it to my best of my abilities. But we were walking through Disneyland and I'm walking so much and I had on like tight yoga pants and for whatever reason, like it made me bleed. And I'm uh. like, why am I bleeding? Like I don't get a period. And so I'm like, this is really weird. Like I got to get a quarter and get a tampon. It was the whole thing. And, uh, and then I noticed that I was getting a yeast infection. I'm like, great. And so I Googled that and it was like, yeah, because it's like the extra amount of walking that I wouldn't normally be doing and probably in the tight pants I wouldn't normally be wearing to go do that much activity for that long. You know what I'm saying? But it like, I don't know, activated something and it fucked me all up. So that was the last thing I Googled. So how is it today? Oh, it's good now. Okay. Oh, I have a surplus of um, of the Diflucan. Diflucan um, because my doctor's a porn doctor and he's like, he's like, he's so great about it. He's so like non judgmental that he's just like, yeah, well, that's just part of the job, right? And I'm yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, here you go. <laughs> How many do you want? What's Diflucan? It gets rid of yeast infection in oh. like a day. It's a 24 hour pill. Oh, nice. Yeah. The only problem is you can't drink while you're on it. So, you know. I recently had uh, an, an incident. Oh, because I, I had a back thing and I had to take a, a, me, a pat. What is it? The prednisone pack? Yeah. Which I've never done that. I don't know what it is. Oh, pre, uh, it's like a, just a anti-inflammatory. Oh, okay. A steroid. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steroid. Okay. And I got a yeast infection like the I next get yeast day. I crazy. Just like that. And I was like, oh, shit, because I'm not in porn, so I don't yeah. have that. And yeah. I'm like, shit. So I ran to Ralph's, got a yeah. monostat. Not the same. Okay, totally dying because I was like, oh my God, I haven't used one of these in forever. And I was like, oh, it was so gross. gross. I have to tell you, it they're was like disgusting. I was giving myself a yeast infection yes. because there was so much white in there. Yeah, they're gross. It was gross, but it cleared that shit up. Though. It did? It cleared it up in that one day. Also, boric acid is really okay, good that at that. that doesn't sound very appealing in yeah. the post. No, but you can, it, you <laughs> just, they're in capsules. You just what? put a capsule up your hoo-ha and you really? just sleep in it overnight and it oozes out like the Vagisil does oh, but, but it gets rid of your yeast infection unless it's a really crazy yeast infection and then it does not get rid of your yeast infection but you there's know there's so many guys right now that are They're watching so this turned would, on. and they would eat it no it's totally somebody's like oh my oh, god give I don't me that want to talk about stat. eating it okay I always have to do that okay all right moving that. on because now we're eating yeast infections yeah. and that's disgusting okay <laughs> do you want to know what I looked up uh, oh yeah! Up. Oh, I thought that was the thing you looked up. Yes, uh, yes, uh, I want to know. So right before the, I yeah. came to the show, I you know had gotten a reminder. Yeah. What is the average size penis? Do you guys know? Mm -mm. Four inches. No. Anybody, Dad? I'd say five and a half. Five point one. Wow. All right, nice. Uh, that's that's I, the average. That was the average. Yeah, I just wanted to do a little refresher because mm. I wasn't sure, but that was the last thing I googled. I right agree with I that. Here. I agree with that. I think you that's see average. a lot of cocks. Yeah. <laughs> I would say that. That's but you're average. not seeing a lot of five inch cocks. I mean, let's I am. Right? I'm not yeah. giving you those shrimpers. Yeah, no, not really. But I mean, I have a real life also. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm a real person. <laughs> I'm a real you girl. Are, you don't only take like 20 yeah. inch cocks. No, thank God. <laughs> not all only porn. That's all you want. No. Porn girls. Okay, so that's what you Google. Okay, and that's the average, just so you know, guys. Okay, all right. So, Lila, I have a question just because I don't feel like everyone does know. So, what. Um, Tell us exactly what spina bifida is. What is the condition? Okay, so spina bifida is a congenital birth defect, and it is like being born with a spinal cord injury. That's okay. the simplest way to put it. So when I was born, I my back didn't close all the way. So the uh, the nerve endings were exposed in my back. So they mm. had to do an emergency surgery where the doctor goes in there and he you know closes the back together. And because of this, there's going to be a lot of complications. A lot of people, um, and it's a, it's like a, it's a, there's a big umbrella of what could happen. So you could lose the ability to walk on your own, lose oh my the God. ability to go to the bathroom on your own. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's very complicated, a lot of pain associated with that. So when I was born, they told my parents that I'd never be able to walk, that I would have a learning disabilities and, oh, wow. you know, that I would be in all sor sorts of pain. So I'm very fortunate that I do, I am able to walk. Mm. I do walk with a slight limp. Um, one of my legs is a lot smaller than the other one. So I, I wear a size three shoe, even though <laughs> the one foot is like significantly smaller. Uh, I can still wear flip flops. I'm very proud <laughs> of that. Um, and it's, yeah, it's like being born with a spinal cord injury. So yeah. I, when I when I when I uh, was a kid, like I didn't really meet other kids with my disability because my parents like they wanted to try to make me feel as normal as possible. And it wasn't until I was older, twenty one was when I went to my first disability um, event and I met uh, a baby with spina bifida. Aww. You know, and so like that, it's just it's really been this journey. You know, when you have a disability, and like for me, it's because 
because I am able to walk, right, and like a lot of people I meet with this build, uh, with spina bifida aren't able to walk, sometimes I feel like I'm in this gray area where I'm disabled, but I can still like, I still do a lot of things, but you able. know? Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's, it's this weird gray area where I kind of feel like, is perfect for comedy, you know? <laughs> yeah. So it, yeah. it works out. Yeah, I was going to ask that. Like, do you feel like it opens more doors for you because you are different? You're a different brand of comedy. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, Yes and no, you okay. know, because I think that when I first got on the scene, people probably thought that oh, I'm just going to talk about being short. But mm. really, in, in my stand-up, I really try to talk about a lot of disability, you know, mm -hmm. because there isn't anybody that's really going that deep into disability. And if I can go on stage and talk about my spina bifida openly you know I feel like the people in the audience they can kind of like have this like weight lifted and really see me for who I am yeah. you know rather than just the disability yeah Dr. Lovejoy have you ever um, coached clients with a disability or like a major body issue you know what I think a lot of people actually call me to uh act as though they live a life that they don't have it. So nobody mm -hmm. has actually, you know, the, a, a fantasy world where they're... Got it. When they call you, it's a different Yeah, level. no, I've never... I've You know, actually, I have a couple clients who said, oh, because I'll say something like, uh, go uh, get on your knees and, you know, tell me if um, I'm in a wheelchair. I'm like, okay, well, let's not do that. So go wheel yourself into the corner and put mm -hmm. your head in the corner. But mm -hmm. other than that, no, I'm not at all, which is yeah. in f 15 years. I'm a little surprised now that you say that. But yeah. I am too. Yeah. Yeah. You? Do you get uh, custom? Do you have anybody want you to like a uh, client that's, you know? No, not really. I mean, my yeah. my requests for my customs are mainly feet. <laughs> that is like the number one genre of like, just show me your feet, whatever my feet are doing. That yeah. is like a huge thing. So crazy, which I love because I don't have to do my makeup. <laughs> you know, I think that um, the thing about disability is it's like, we're not really sexualized in that way, mm, right? Totally. So I think that when I, especially when I was in college, like I really struggled with that because I had a lot of guys who would tell me like, I really like you, Lila, but I'm afraid of what my friends are going to think. Or oh I can't, my God. I've literally had this said to my face, I can't date you because my frat brothers are going to make fun of me <gasps> for dating a midget, you know? So oh. when I tell you that like this has been this whole journey of like now that I have a boyfriend, we've been together for two years and yeah. like it wasn't, it, it really took a lot for me to kind of get to this point of like being totally confident and secure in the disability, right? Where Because when I was um, in college and I would do like online dating, it would just be like me sitting like this. Yeah. And a guy wouldn't know that I was four foot six. So we would like Skype and FaceTime and like talk for months. And then I would be like, oh, when I meet them, I'm going to be like surprised, <gasps> you know? Because I thought they'd fall in love with my personality, right? Oh my right? right. And, and now looking back on that, it was like, no, like you... And when I moved to LA and I got on Tinder, I was it was always me next to a parking meter, <laughs> or like that. I was being yeah. very open and honest. honest of this is who I am. Mm -hmm. And then when I got into comedy and I'm on t on stage and I'm talking about spina bifida and I'm going into detail about things, that's when I met my boyfriend, who's mm -hmm. also a comedian. So it's like now he really knows what he's getting into, yeah. right? So it's like, in a way. I weeded out a lot of people who yeah. weren't going to be interested yes. in me because of this. But I'm also feeling like as a stand-up comedian, it's part of my mission, you know, to get on stage and to get as big as I can to show that, hey, you can be disabled and sexy. Yeah. And it is okay to be attracted to somebody like me. Yeah. It's okay to be attracted to a little person, to someone smaller than me. We all I'm have like giving you a standing ovation right <laughs> now when you say this. I'm like, yes, girl, get it. What's but your boyfriend's height? So this is super funny. My boyfriend, <laughs> he's, he's five foot three. So I'm four six so together we just look like he'll joke around and be like we were made for each other and I'm like you're short I have a spina bifida but okay you know <laughs> and does, does he have any disability he's just a short no, man no he's just a short man and yeah. it's so he what really attracted me to Eric is the fact that he is so confident in who he is he's very smart he's very funny and he yeah. really holds his own but it's like um, and he's got a big dick. Oh, so oh yeah, he has a big dick. He does. I wanted to ask. He does have a big dick. man. <laughs> he's got a big dick. And it, is it big We've been a weekend together. I, yeah. I'm like, that's yeah. the first question. I'm like, but it's not, it's, it's not just like big because I'm small. It's like an actually it's like a, a nice big dick. And I'm like, oh, this is why he walks around with all that confidence and doesn't swag. give a fuck. Yeah. And like, you know what I mean? Because yes. he knows he has big a big dick. Yeah, you strap I love big dick energy. But it was... It, wow. I do feel like we were made for each other, but it yeah. it, it took me going through all of this 
kind of uh, just, you know, understanding myself. But I've always, I, I would date a guy that was 6'2". I would date a guy that was 3'2". I would. You know, it's not it's not about how tall you about yeah. are. It's about what's in your heart yeah. and how you carry yourself. So. Yeah. And who you're attracted to. You, you gel, you gel. You don't. Yeah. You don't. It's. 100%. You know in seconds. But you right? shouldn't, you, but, you know, I think uh, a lot of people, if you're attracted to that, you shouldn't let what your friends are going to oh, yeah, think that's deter that's... you from that. And I think now at 28, like, if I was single now, I think my confidence would attract so many different type of men to me yeah. because of how I carry myself, you yeah, know? Yes. It's, Back in the day, it was partly because of my disability, but partly because of my insecurity around my disability. Oh, 100%. That I allowed people to treat me like that, Did you that tell him too. to fuck himself after he said that, or did you just, like... So no, yeah. it was it was a very because I had that happen so many times where like I would really like somebody, you know, and they would they would date me and I would think this is really gonna be something and it'd be like, oh no, we're only dating in secret. Why haven't I met any of your friends? Why have you know what I mean? And it's like, oh, it, the disability is really bothering you, you mm -hmm. know, and it's insane, but it's real. Yeah. And um it's so great that I can just make fun of them on stage and on podcasts now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That was yeah. still so good, too. You know, and it's like it's a lot of I will say I do appreciate that a lot of these guys who were kind of um, dicks in that way have reached out to me via Facebook oh, or nice. Instagram to be like, oh, I would, you know, I made a big mistake. I was such an asshole. I wish I never did that. But at the same time, I'm like, thank you. Yeah. Because going through that experience did make me stronger. I mean, it could have went a lot of other ways, but you know, we're all, we're all on our own journeys and we all go through our own heartbreaks and our yeah. own shit that people say to us. Yeah. And it's like, what are you going to do with that? You know? Yeah. And I wasn't going to stand for it and I'm just going to do me and do comedy and you know, I love yes, it. Queen. I'm the joy. Yes, I know, queen. right? Okay. We, uh, I'm, <laughs> this show moves so fast. We have five <laughs> minutes. So we're going to run to our questions from our viewers and guys just, Oh, a quick reminder, uh, we do love getting all of your questions. We love, we get to as many as we can every episode. So email your questions uh, to info at sexyfunnyraw.com on um, Instagram or Twitter um, or Facebook, I guess. Uh, you can message us there too. So, okay. So this question goes out to everybody and it says, I have some serious body issues and I never want to take off my clothes fully during sex or have the lights on. Mm. I just can't. My boyfriend keeps pressuring me to get fully naked and says it's affecting his wanting to have sex. What do I do? Um, you know, I, I, I feel like I can relate to this mm -hmm. because, like, with my back and my scars on my back, it, like, I would always never want to, like, take my shirt off, you know? Yeah. And... It, it is like that, like that really sucks to me in that yeah. situation, especially because it's like your boyfriend can tell you that you're beautiful and I love you and this is what great. But it's like if you don't feel that yeah. it's really hard to kind of, you yeah. know, I didn't have sex with my shirt off until I got my boobs done. Really? <laughs> no lie. I never had sex with mine. I was like engaged to a man. I want to see what they look like. Oh, they were, I, I, I just had nipples. It was really bad. Um, I had it in my 10 year challenge on Instagram. Oh, uh, oh, the, the bikini. Yeah. Yeah, can't yeah, see yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so I get it too. Um, I don't know. I don't know how you get to that comfort level. You know, I guess just like good communication is always my thing. Maybe start with like a mood light. Yeah. Like you a know? light light. Like a light light. Like a, a salt yeah. lamp. Yeah. Well, it also, I think, comes from within a lot. You've got to yeah. work on, you know. got to work on your inner self you've gotta, before you can make your outer self. You can't yeah. feel sex, be sexy, and unless also, you feel some form of And also of sexy. know this, like, your man clearly thinks you're banging if he wants the lights on and yeah. if he wants to fuck you with the lights on yeah. and is asking for that, like, you have somebody who does want you. Yeah. Good but that's advice. why I think it's so within. Mm -hmm. Like, you they, you can't even see. If you have, don't have the esteem, you anybody can tell you how great you are and you're yeah. not going to see it, which is unfortunate, but yeah, therapy. Yeah. Okay. One more question and then I'm going to run out, I promise. Okay. All right. So the next question is, uh, some men think it's rude or weird to be into sex or talk about sex openly how do you gauge how much to talk about sex when first dating someone i can't answer that because i also talk about sex way too often in, in, in rooms of strangers and i don't feel like it's un, i don't i don't think you can ever talk about it too much i think we should all be talking about it a lot more so that's my opinion. i'll say any man that is gonna feel uncomfortable with you talking about sex within like what, whenever you want to talk about it isn't the man for you because yeah. I can guarantee you there is the man that really is into you won't give a fuck what you talk Absolutely. about like he'll be yeah. so into you that he'll be happy to engage in that sexual conversation with you right yeah, yeah I'll true. say it anything anytime because you know <laughs> 
No it, filter, it's, though. No, uh, you know, I guess you kind of feel a person. You feel the room. You know yeah. what's appropriate, what's not. You don't have to be talking about shitting on a table while you're with somebody's family, except dad over here. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, but, yeah, I don't care. And if, yeah. if somebody thinks it's too, like, much and I'm too much, yeah. fuck them. Yeah. No, I agree with okay. that. Yeah, yeah, Dad, how do you feel about that subject? I, I never even thought about it. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean. You don't really we, censor we, yourself. We we talk about sex. I mean, yeah. You know, even you and I talk about sex. It's real yeah. healthy. Yeah. It is. People don't talk about sex enough, and that's our problem in society, yeah, which I is why things we are We talked about sex at the dinner table. Yeah. And my family, even at, yeah. even my with our grandma and grandpa there. I mean, yeah. it was very open I remember always. they used to tell me at one point, like, to go and leave the room, and then at one point they stopped telling me to yeah. leave the room, and I'm like, I still don't think I should be here. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, yeah. like, why do you still feel like the conversation is inappropriate, uh, and I should excuse myself? Uh, but our family doesn't really see it like that. Even recently, we were going to play this uh, this uh, Green Apples game, and it is, it's meant for, like, 17 and older because it does get a little graphic, and we're just, like, we let our 10-year-old nieces and nephew play with us, and, and somebody at one point was like, well, I don't want my kid to play that. And we're like, really? Like, we don't get it. Like, we're like, it's so, t- in our family, it's just like, we don't even think about it. Like, that's not a taboo subject for us. So. Yeah, my, I grew up in a very open household. And yeah. honestly, I didn't even know what things were. And I've been thinking of movies or things I watched. I didn't know what things meant. Yeah. I didn't know what words were. It was just, I knew it was a silly, dirty word, but I didn't know it. Yeah. I wouldn't oh. know what a gang bang was. It'd be like, hee, 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 it's a funny word. Yeah, but... it's a funny word where we bang things together but all yeah. in a gang. All right, guys, that's it. That's uh, that's <laughs> another episode that we have just wrapped up. So I want to thank you so much, Lila, for coming thank on the you. show. Oh, absolutely. You it were great. It was amazing. I had a great time. Good. Tell the people where they can find you then. You can find me at Love Lila Hart, L-O-V-E-L-I-L-A-H-A-R-T, and on Channel 310, yes. Small Talk with Lila Hart. Absolutely. Dr. Lovejoy, thank you so much for being here yet again for another oh, episode with me. It's been incredible and amazing. Tell people where they can find you. You can find me, Dr. Lovejoy, on Sirius XM at the I Want Radio Show on Tuesdays and on Channel 415. And you can find me on Instagram at I Want Dr. Lovejoy, Twitter, Femdom Therapy, and I Want Dr. Lovejoy for all my erotic audio. She's going to take your and money. You can call me. And I'm going to take like your money. It. <laughs> fuck you. Or as the femdoms say, fuck you, pay me. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, pay me. All right, Dad. Thank you again for being here for another episode, thank even you. if it was just a ping in for a few times. Yeah. And to you guys, thank you so much. And we'll see you again next time. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Sexy Funny Raw. Find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Sexy Funny Raw. Watch and listen to all of our episodes at sexyfunnyraw.com. Making the airwaves sexy, one show at a time. Until next time, stay sexy, bitches.